Hello, this is Yogeshwar 7000 again and I'm back on my series on stories from the Puranas and today we'll be discussing about a very interesting story coming directly from the Puranas. It is not a story which is either published on paper or on the internet. So I will request you to have firm faith and belief in it. And today we'll be talking about a mountain range as you can see in the screen. It's a mountain range and the mountain range is the mountain Vindhya okay the mountain Vindhya is a very well-known mountain range in India and uh, it has its reference in the ancient scriptures you will see a lot of ancient scriptures which uh, refer to this mountain range of uh, of Vindhya okay it actually um, spans over several states in northern India and central India so it, the range extends from Gujarat in the west to more central part in uh, Madhya Pradesh which is central India and also it extends to Uttar Pradesh which is towards slightly northeast and then the state of Bihar in the east okay and some parts of uh, Jharkhand as well so these are several states where this great great mountain range appears so this story is about that mountain range um, and like I said it's coming directly from the Purana so uh, sage Narada who is the sage or the Rishi of the Devatas or the gods. That's how he's called Deva Rishi. He had gone uh, on a visit to the mountain Vindhya and the great mountain Vindhya worshipped sage Narada. Okay, and uh, This story is referring to the earlier ancient times where every object of creation by God had so much power that it could actually communicate so that's how you know this mountain range Vindhya could actually communicate it uh, its thoughts through either words or through telepathy um, in today's day and age of course we cannot find that kind of a uh, power which we can see you know you'll read in ancient mythological Hindu scriptures that a river was talking to a sage or the sage was talking to a mountain range even in Ramana Ramayana if you refer to the place where Ram had to cross an ocean to go to Sri Lanka to get his wife back he requested the sagar or the ocean to kind of subside so that he could make a little bridge where he could cross over the ocean and reach Sri Lanka and Ramayana has a little part where there was a little conversation between Lord Rama and uh, the ocean the ocean had life and uh, he could communicate with Lord Rama so what I'm trying to say here is that in ancient ages you could see references of all these objects which are the creation of God like mountains rivers uh, ponds and uh, oceans seas they could communicate not they don't have not that they don't have life now they do have life now as well in this day and age of Kali Yuga but maybe they cannot effectively communicate to people um, or maybe the people the humans today are not that spiritual or spiritually elevated that they can communicate with these creations of God but uh, the story is coming from the Puranas which refers to the ancient times so Sage Narada had gone to visit the mountain Vindhya and Vindhya worshipped Narada but Vindhya was uh, a little proud and vain and a little arrogant so he said well I am full of all the desirable objects that one can think of so mountain Vindhya told that to sage Narada and Narada could, un could understand that he's a little filled with vanity a little pride so Narada sage Narada replied to the Vindhya mountain 
that the Mount Sumeru, which is another huge mountain, is superior to you, okay? And the reason why he's superior to you is because the gods are always there, all the gods are present there. So that made Mount or Mountain Vindhya a little upset and he decided to become an equal to Mountain Sumeru. So what he did was he started to pray to Lord Shiva and for six months he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and finally the great compassionate, the great God or Lord Shiva appeared before him <clears throat> and asked him why are you remembering me and Mountain Vindhya described the situation and he said you know he wants to become the equal of Mount Sumeru so please 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 always be present in my mountain range okay um, and to which the great Lord Shiva the kind Lord Shiva the compassionate Lord Shiva agreed and he said okay I'm going to be present in your mountain range okay and the linga which is the symbol of Lord Shiva started to be worshipped there as Omkara okay that is the Shiva linga Omkara started to be worshipped there and uh, so now these this day and age you can see that linga started to be known as Omkareshwar Omkareshwar or you can even call it Omkareshwara okay and uh, <clears throat> and it is actually a Jyotirlinga so what is a Jyotirlinga? Jyotirlinga is also a Linga but it's an extremely powerful Linga and there are 12 such Jyotirlingas which are more powerful than a normal Linga not that the other Lingas are not powerful and Shiva is not there but it is believed that in Jyotirlingas, Shiva is always present there. So there are 12 Jyotirlingas, like I said, which uh, are there starting from northern India to southern India. The southern part of India has the the, the Jyotirlinga called Rameshwar, okay? And uh, today we'll talk, we are talking about this Omkareshwar who came into existence because the mountain Vindhya requested Lord Shiva to appear in his mountain range always be with him so that he could become equal to mountain Sumeru okay now as far as the temple of Omkareshwar is concerned it is uh, a temple which actually appears on an island in uh, in in, uh, in the river Narbada okay and the river Narbada also flows to that mountain range so there's a connection between the Vindhya range with this Jyotirlinga Omkareshwar which appears in, uh, in in an island okay and um, the river Narbada okay so that's how it is that's how there's a connection with the mountain and uh, as I've already told you in the earlier part of this video that this mountain range extends from the western part of India in Gujarat to the eastern part of India which is Bihar and it goes down south towards the central India as well in Madhya Pradesh so this Shivalinga or Omkareshwar actually appears in Madhya Pradesh okay in a place called Khandwa in Madhya Pradesh and uh, like I said you know it is on the banks not on the banks but it's on a little island the mainland kind of kind of a thing you know it's and uh, it's it's not on the banks it's on a it's on an island okay and it is that island is called Shivapuri in the new in the Narbada River okay and uh, the shape of that island is said to be like the Hindu Om's symbol so it started to be called Omkareshwara or the Lord Omkar which is Lord Shiva itself and the temple is called Omkareshwara okay and that's a major major Hindu pilgrimage a Jyotirlinga just I said just like I said 
and uh, it is worshipped and revered by Hindus all over the world. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, which is enjoyed this story, which is coming directly from the Puranas. And uh, in the meanwhile, I will recommend subscribe to my channel. Check out my website. There is a link below, and I will see you with an interesting topic in either Vedic astrology or stories from the Puranas in my next session very soon. Goodbye.